by both Billy Adams and Detective Chief Inspector David Grevin. Oh, poor old Terry, I feel sorry for him really, he must have felt really torn. I mean on the one hand, you got the criminal code, what says you never grass on no one never. And on the other hand, you got the bloke who grassed on him, shagging his missus. But I, I don't think he should have grassed on Adams really. But there are times when a criminal finds it hard to do the right thing. I mean, he's only human, aren't we all? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's time we thought of changing the criminal code. Inspector Robbins was now closing in on Grevin and Adams, and Grevin knew it. Well, Grevin was getting very worried. They didn't know how to deal with Robbins. Robbins was so straight, you see. He tried introducing him to Trudy, but all Robbins did was ask her questions. She was sitting there with a tin of pineapple chunks spread all over her bosom, and all he did was ask her where she was on the 25th of July. In the end, Grevin couldn't handle it. He had to lick him off himself. Now you say that finally Grevin cracked and warned Adams to go into hiding just as Robbins was planning to have him arrested, is that right? Yeah, that's right. I saw him do it. He didn't know I was watching. He dialed Adams his number, said disappear, and then hung up. And that's when he saw me in the doorway. Did he offer any explanation for what you'd just seen him do? Yeah. He pretended he'd been phoning a friend with the solution to a crossword clue. But I've known Grevin far too many years to believe that. So you went to see Robbins? Well, I had to. Especially when I realised that Grevin was trying to set me up for the whole thing. And when did you realise that? After lunch, when I came back and found him trying to stuff a silver soup tureen in my locker. Robbins went immediately to Grevin's superiors and told them what Dickerson and Marples had told him. Finally, reluctantly, they were forced to concede that there was sufficient evidence to warrant placing Grevin on immediate sick leave. By this time, of course, Adams had done as Grevin had suggested and disappeared. For two years, the police maintained that Adams was impossible to trace, but we found it remarkably easy. All we had to do was to place this ad in a London evening newspaper, asking vicious criminals interested in writing their memoirs to get in touch with a publisher. Of the 128 replies we received, one of them came from someone who on further investigation seemed almost certainly to be Billy Adams. Hello, Billy Adams. My name's Dick. My name's Dick. Hello, Mr. Adams. We know it's you. We'd like to ask you a few questions about your relationship with Chief Inspector Grip. Right, get inside. Um, uh, r r right, so, so does this mean you're granting us an interview? F*** off. Um, get inside. Um, me, me, I, I, I have to say that you're not presenting yourself particularly... Get inside. All right, all right, all right. It, it is the filth. Ah, oh, uh, cool. Fine, fall in front of No, all right, all right, all right. Um, I just... Twenty minutes later, the police arrived and took Billy Adams into custody. That was three months ago. Why then has he still not been charged with anything? For operational reasons. We have to consider the possibility of doing a deal with the man. You don't seriously intend to continue using him as a supergrass, do you? Of course we do. The man is a unique source of highly invaluable information regarding a wealth of criminal activities. But he's been on the run from you for two years in which time he's encountered a great many lawbreakers. The man who hid him, no, the man who provided him with me, a false Ad identity, Adams, the man who set him up in Adams the house, shot at us. the man who gave him the gun, yes, thank you. That'll be quite a catch, that one, I should think. Some people may feel that the so-called supergrass, Billy Pavingstone Adams, has got off astonishingly lightly, especially when his fate is compared with that of one of the other informants involved in the case. That man being former detective sergeant Barry Dickerson. When the news spread that he had grasped on Chief Inspector Grevin, a fellow officer, his life in the police force became totally impossible. Nobody talked to me. Nobody helped me. Nobody backed me up. So in the end, I just left. But I couldn't get a reference, which is why I have to do this for a living. Even now, they won't leave me alone. 
every now and again when I'm out there in the middle with my lollipop, a squad car will just drive straight at me. Some of the kids won't even cross when they see it's me out there. I can't say I blame them. Next week, David Harper reopens an explosive case. Tin hats on next Friday night at 10.30.